Hey folks, sometimes things are not what they appear to be. Stay tuned to the end of this video. Hi folks, welcome back to Hamblechea Ranch. So before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to let you folks know that uh, here in a couple of weeks, Alan over at the Wilderness Hangout and Jen and I from Hamblechea Ranch, we're going to be doing a collective uh, series, a two-part series, answering your questions about our homesteading uh, journeys here in Maine. We are both new homesteaders here in Maine, and so this uh, roundtable discussion is really going to be centered around what it's like for uh, uh, Alan coming from Florida and Jen and I coming from Illinois to start our homesteading journeys here in Maine. So if you've got any questions you want to ask us, please go ahead and drop those in the comments below. So one of the big challenges we have here uh, where we are located here in Maine is that when we have a lot of ice, we have a lot of problems with our road. Uh, I had mentioned it in a prior video that we had a long-term solution uh, and that at the time we were simply taking uh, gravel or sand and uh, taking my snow machine up the road and spreading the, the sand and the ash uh, on, on the road in all of the icy spots. Well, that's not sustainable. So in this video, we're gonna show you what our long-term solution is. But before I get to that, I gotta get these buckets unloaded. So our long-term solution is one of these salt dog spreaders. Uh, this particular spreader will fit right on the hitch of the truck. And uh, assuming everything works as it should, we should be able to sand the road no problem. Now let me just add, we had to purchase this. This is not a paid ad by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this just so happens to be the one that we chose. Uh, it made best sense for us given our situation. In our financial situation so we're going to go ahead and get this thing unpacked get it uh, installed on the truck we're going to try to see if we can't spread with it Okay, so at first glance, it looks like we've got everything we need. Uh, now, I'll forewarn you, I'm an instructions reader, uh, so I'm going to uh, give this thing a real quick read before I try to put anything together. I just want to make sure I do it right. So I've got a pretty good idea based on the instructions on how this is going to go together. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get it installed.
Okay, well that's it. Now, the installation, it took me about an hour or so uh, when all is said and done between looking at the instructions, uh, making sure that I had all the right tools. So overall, I'm kind of happy the way with how it's set up. Uh, it does, I mean, it does kind of wiggles a, a little bit, but uh, it wobbles a little bit, but that's okay as long as it spreads. And that's really the key for me. Uh, the next step here is we're going to go ahead and get the cable installed. And for this purpose, all I'm going to do is just run the cable up into the bed, run it into the passenger side or the driver's side door, plug it in, and that way I have access to it. Uh, when I'm not using this thing, uh, I'll obviously take it off of the hitch uh, and then also put the, uh, put the wiring up as well. All right, well, let's see if it'll spread. All right, so now that we're all set up, uh, I've got some ice here. Really, the first thing for us to do is try to make an adjustment on how much uh, sand and salt is going to be spread. So, not really keen on how this adjusts. There's actually, you've got to loosen a bolt, uh, two bolts, uh, to move the plate. But be that as it may, uh, we're going to go ahead and get some uh, sand in here. We're going to turn it on. We're going to take a look and see how much uh, how much the spread is and how much is actually coming out. And then we'll make any adjustments if we need to. All right, so I am less than impressed uh, as of right now. Uh, we got to take a look at this thing. All right, so I adjusted it a little bit, so we'll see what happens now. So I am not impressed at all. As a matter of fact, I'm a little uh, kind of upset and disappointed. So I, there's no auger on the inside of the motor. And it's completely all gravity fed. So what I'm going to do is try to drive back and forth and uh, see if it'll come out with just the shaking of the truck being on. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that's a bummer. So, without having some sort of agitator in there uh, mounted to that motor, it's just not letting the uh, the sand down. So, we're gonna open up that thing all the way, and we're gonna see if that works. Oh, it is open all the way. Okay, so my initial review of this is that it's not working. Uh, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, uh, at least uh, as far as being able to spread the sand that we have. Uh, it's just not working. Uh, now, before I harm or before I say anything bad about the actual hopper itself or the spreader, uh, there is, it is likely that it just might be the sand that I'm using. Uh, and if that is the case, then that is something we'll have to rectify here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and empty this, and then I'm going to try to put uh, some fine gravel that we have, and we're going to see if that helps. 
Uh, if it doesn't, then I'm gonna use just plain salt. And we're gonna see how that works. Uh, my gut tells me though, that we need an agitator on here. Uh, something that's gonna spin on the inside of the hopper to kind of collect all of the stuff and allow it to fall down. Um, but I don't know, so we'll we'll find out. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We got we got a little work to do. So as it turns out, after all of that work, after spending all that time putting this thing together, getting it mounted on the truck, throwing some material in there, and and finding out that it doesn't work the way I need it to work, uh, today we're going to be taking this thing apart. Uh, we're going to be putting it back in the box and we're shipping it back to the supplier. So after doing some more research, uh, what I found is that uh, as because of the hopper shape, the material up in the top is going to be coming down and it's supposed to slide through that opening and then into the sprayer here. Well, unfortunately, as that sand comes down, it compacts uh, right before it begins to drop and it just sits there and gets stuck. I didn't realize that uh, when I purchased it uh, and the sand by itself that we have, it's kind of a sand gravel salt mixture. Uh, it, it, it doesn't appear that it would have done that, but unfortunately, as you saw, it did. So I think what these things are really designed for are strictly uh, uh, rock, uh, salt rock. Uh, I don't think you could run anything through these things other than salt rock. Um, I know that's what they call for, uh, but we had the, the assumption based on, you know, what we've seen and based on the fact that that opening was a really large opening, I just thought that, that the sand would work, but it's not. So this thing is really designed for pavements. Uh, if you use salt on pavement, the salt goes through the snow, goes through the ice, hits the pavement, warms up the pavement. As you come by with a plow truck, uh, it's really easy to push that salt or that ice out of the way. Unfortunately, with where we live, we can't use salt and salt alone uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, for one, because we are on an unmaintained road, it is a gravel road. That gravel road, we need that road to freeze and we really need to have a nice layer of snowpack on top of it so that when we plow, the plow blade doesn't hit into the road and then begin to, you know, um, um, cut up the road and, 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 and destroy the road at all. We really need that pack so that it's smooth. It's a nice, smooth plow. The reason we use that sand, gravelly rock, uh, salt mixture is so that uh, when we do get ice on the road, uh, it gives us traction for the tires. The intent is not to uh, break down all of the ice uh, as you would on a pavement. Uh, it's more to allow us to be able to drive over the ice. And so for that reason, we can't run salt uh, strictly salt on these roads. The salt would come through the ice, it would get onto the gravel, it would melt the ice, or at least it would Swiss cheese the ice. Uh, and But when, more importantly, when it did hit that gravel, it would begin to to uh, melt that, that, that ice that's in the gravel, uh, making the gravel muddy, and we don't want that. So all in all, I think this, this spreader, it would be great if you were using it on a asphalt or on a you know hard surface but for what we're doing here um off grid on an unmaintained road on gravel roads and dirt roads and logging roads this simply is not the solution all right folks with that said i gotta disassemble this thing get it all cleaned up get it in the box and take it back to uh take it off to the uh, shipper so we can get get this thing returned anyways Thanks for sticking around watching this video. If you haven't hit that like button, please do so. Please share this video. Uh, please subscribe, and we will see you folks on the next one.